I want to ask about some of the objections raised by Center for American Progress staff last week regarding the invitation to Netanyahu. In the statement they read aloud, they wrote, quote, There is something distinctly not bold or progressive about referring to the prime minister as someone with whom we disagree or someone who said some terrible things. They went on to say, quote, This is a person who continues to defend the deaths of over 2,000 people, many of them children, last summer alone. What do we call a disagreement of that magnitude, a thing that terrible? Would we bring other leaders to this institution who had committed similar crimes? Meanwhile, Winnie Stachelberg, CAP's executive vice president for external affairs, told Foreign Policy magazine that as a think tank, quote, we believe we need to be open in engaging with people we don't agree with. She also pointed out that the Israelis initially reached out to CAP and that in the past, CAP has been, quote, highly critical of the prime minister for only dealing with the right. She went on to say, quote, had we said no to Netanyahu, there would be no public forum where he would have been asked tough questions. And quite frankly, we would have been hypocritical. So, Ali Gharib, can you comment on what uh, the CAP executive vice president for external affairs said and whether, from your assessment of the event, uh, the questions asked were critical of Netanyahu? Well, you know, um, I think that there's a hypocrisy there. You know, it, it's tough from where I'm sitting, because of this incident that happened a few years ago, to have some of the same CAP executives that were involved in that saying that now they favor an open debate after they, they censored our writing. Uh, but, you know, I think that their record speaks for themselves, th itself. There's no, you know, none of these groups would host uh, proponents of boycott, divesting and sanctioning Israel, even though that's a growing grassroots movement. And, and granted, you know, that's different than a head of state, but still, it's, it's about the, the, if it's about the free debate of ideas, that's an idea that's growing and is increasingly important. And, uh, and so I don't think that they really want just an open debate with, with all comers. I think that it is sort of pandering to uh, a particularly powerful political force in the United States. Let's go to uh, the Center for American Progress event with uh, the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu on Tuesday. Cap President Nir attend and questioned him about a comment he made during the recent elections in Israel. One incident that really did strike a nerve with many progressives was statements made during the recent election. I mean, I just want to quote. Uh, where it was said, you said Arab voters are coming out in droves to the polls. I think people were a little taken aback by that. So what do you say to progressives in the United States who worry about comments like that and what it means for an inclusive Israel? Well, I, I, I think that these, uh, uh, this statement, as it was said, was wrong. Because, uh, first of all, you should know that Arabs voted for me, and I welcome that. Uh, in fact, you may check this, but I think they voted for me in considerably larger numbers than uh, they voted for the Labour Party. Uh, I was not referring to going to votes. I was speaking about a specific list that was opposed, uh, but it shouldn't have been said. A few days after the election, I called in the Arab leaders uh, and uh, Arab leaders to the uh, prime minister's residence, and I said, I'm the prime minister of each of you. And I. Uh, uh, I don't want that statement to go uncorrected. I corrected it. I made sure that they understand it. That's Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Your response, Ali Gharib? Well, you know, even that answer has some, some, some problems with it. He says that uh, despite his statement that Palestinian citizens of Israel voted for, for the Likud in larger numbers than labor, and that's just not true. Uh, Noam Shezef did an analysis on 972 magazine, the the lefty Israeli blog, that, that, you know, it wasn't a comprehensive analysis because the, the actual statistics can be tough to divine. But he pointed out that in the, in the Arab municipalities that are, that are Palestinian cities within Israel, uh, Likud had been beat something like three to one by labor in its best showings. And so, you know, even that, there's the guy just uh, spits out falses. And I think that speaks to the fact that that uh, Nira Tandon wasn't the right person to conduct this interview because she's not prepared with that sort of information. She doesn't know the issues well enough to be able to respond when Netanyahu brings these falsehoods. He was also questioned during the Center for American Progress event on Tuesday um, about Gaza. Israel went through the book. It went by the book. 
It left Gaza to the last square centimeter. It took away all the settlements, skip freeze, just took them apart. It even disinterred people from their graves, handed the keys over to Abu Mazen, who promptly lost it to uh, Hamas, even though they were only 3,000 strong then and he had 15,000 troops, they kicked him out. Your response, Ali Garib? Yeah, I mean, that's just not true either. Every international authority in the world considers Gaza occupied. And the reason for that is because Israel controls its borders and reserves the right to make incursions there. Just because there aren't settlements and aren't, like, checkpoints on Gazan roads doesn't mean that it's not uh, militarily occupied and that it's that the residents there aren't subjugated by Israeli military power. I mean, even Israel doesn't make new declarations of war every time it starts these flares up of violence in Gaza. It does it under the authority that it has as an occupying power. Well, Netanyahu was also asked about settlements, and this was his response. There have been no new settlements built in the last 20 years, and even before I became prime minister the first time. The additions are in existing uh, communities. The map doesn't materially change. By the way, Google this, because this is just repeated ad nauseum. So it assumes the cachet of self-evident truth that they were gobbling up land and so on. We're not gobbling up land because it doesn't take up any land. I mean, the total amount of built-up land is a, so just a few percent. And the addition, if you look at over, over time, the addition, it's got to be a fraction of a percent, maybe one-tenth of one percent, two-tenths of one percent. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe three-tenths of one percent. That's the go land that is being gobbled up. The settlements are there. The growth in the settlements does not materially affect the potential map for peace. And third, I think that it's an issue that can be resolved, but I don't think it's the core issue. The reason it's not the core issue is that it wasn't a core issue in Gaza either. Ali Gharib, your comments on what Netanyahu said about the status of settlements. Yeah, I mean, again, it's just like obfuscation. He doesn't—he he just elides the main points. The, the settlements are clearly growing. They're growing in population. They're growing in size. And when Netanyahu says there hasn't been any new settlements, his government took steps just this very week to legalize two outpost settlements, which are settlements that are considered illegal even by Israeli law. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, it, it, the settlements have grown in, uh, in population so much over the past uh, 20 years. You know, it, it, if you look back at the evacuation of settlers from Gaza, that was about 5,000 or so settlers. And, uh, and now you've got hundreds of thousands living in the West Bank. The idea that they can just be extricated without an issue and it's not a problem and the settlements are an obstacle to peace is totally bogus. And everybody knows it in the world, except for Netanyahu. Well, I want to go back to the op-ed in the foreword written by Democratic presidential hopeful Hillary Clinton last week in the piece headlined, How I Would Reaffirm Unbreakable Bond with Israel and Benjamin Netanyahu. Clinton wrote, quote, I have stood with Israel my entire career. As president, I will continue this flight. She goes on to say, quote, I will do everything I can to enhance our strategic partnership and strengthen America's security commitment to Israel, ensuring that it always has the qualitative military edge to defend itself. That includes immediately dispatching a delegation of the Joint Chiefs of Staff to meet with senior Israeli commanders. I would also invite the Israeli Prime Minister to the White House in my first month in office. In July this year, Clinton also wrote a letter to the billionaire Israel supporter Haim Saban, seeking his assistance in countering the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions Movement, or BDS, calling it, quote, the latest attempt to single out Israel on the world stage, adding that we've seen this sort of attack before at the UN and elsewhere. So, Ali Gharib, could you comment on Hillary Clinton coming out so openly uh, in defense of Israel? Yeah, I mean, she's clearly trying to draw a contrast to Obama, and, and it seems pretty obvious that a big part of that issue is, is donors like, like Haim Saban. I mean, Saban was, is a billionaire and is a Democratic mega-donor, but was notably cool on Barack Obama, and as he said himself, over Israel. He's got very hawkish views on Israel. And so it seems obvious that this is just kind of pandering. You know, in, in Clinton's op-ed, there was not a word about the occupation. And uh, the only appearances Palestinians made were as, as knife-wielding terrorists. And, uh, and there, you know, no mention of, of their basic rights and how their basic rights are being trampled on uh, by the Israeli occupation. So, you know, this is like going 
you know, taking us back a few steps in, in, in the changing discourse about Israel in this country. Well, Ali Garib, we want to thank you very much for being with us, contributor to The Nation magazine, former national security reporter for Think Progress. We will uh, link to your piece and also to the um, Think Progress piece, 10 falsehoods that Netanyahu told during his appearance they at CAP. For that. Yes.